Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett. This is the Ramble. Let me turn the music down. It's a little loud. It's gonna. It's the music's too loud. The music is too loud. That's it. Anyway, how are you? Uh, got a lot to talk about later tonight, so uh, please stay tuned for the citizen panel over most of this same gabnet because uh, it's going to be pretty radioactive tonight. In the meantime, uh, we want to talk to somebody we love talking to, and, well, let me introduce her. Look who's with us once again, ladies and gentlemen, ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ronnie well, Bennett. Those, what are those reality shows? Something about the wives of some city? Oh, yeah. The, the what wives are they called? Of, What's the title? Uh, I don't know. The Real Housewives of... Real Housewives. Well, yeah. Okay, so um, what can we make? Ex-wives. Real ex-wives. You know, you know what's terrible? What's terrible, if I can mention it quickly here, about that, that term, the Real Housewives of this or the Real Housewives of that, isn't that an antiquated term? I mean, what? do do women who who are are married and maybe stay at home and take care of the kids? Do they call themselves housewives anymore? I don't know. I have no idea. And I think it's only rich people can do that, and they probably have nannies. Well, I mean, they call them housewives, and they're not really. You know, the the term is kind of antiquated. You know, wife, the wives of whatever, mm -hmm. but housewives. That indicates a certain form of slavery. Uh, or I get a picture in my head of 1950s housewife yeah. with a ap proper apron and all dressed up and her hair done. Yeah. And, you know, and cleaning the house looking like she's on her way to lunch by today's standards. Right, right. So, you know, <laughs> come on, folks. Let's get with it. Housewives, I don't know, they got to come up with a better term. How about the sluts? Real oh, come sluts on. Of, come well, on, because come all on. these women no, are just I'll go straight for that. <laughs> I'll go straight for that because that's the way they portray them. I don't know. I don't you, know. I've never seen the I shows. Know, I, so I, 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 I got hooked on one of them a long time ago. The the Real Housewives of uh, Los Angeles, uh, not anymore. But I was watching it for a while, and I, I found it entertaining because you know in England they don't call it reality shows. They say they call it scripted reality. And Just when no, when they're giving away an award for reality <laughs> shows, they call it scripted reality. Just as bad as not doing it. Yeah, not well, scripted. anyway, anyway, how you doing, kiddo? Everybody wants to know. I'm getting by. I'm getting by. You're getting by. Uh, yeah. We were we were talking before we went on, and I I made the mistake by saying, and I said I knew you were going to get upset by it. Uh, but, no, you uh, didn't. But, but yes, I did. I said. I know that you won't. Uh, uh, you'll take umbrage with us. Anyway, what I said was, you said you're dying, and we know that. And I said, well, you know, people will tell you that uh, uh, we're all dying. You know, and then you got really mad at that because you say you hate to hear that. I've been there all my life until now. I have been one of those people that some people say we are all dying. That's not true. You don't think about it that way. Every human on earth pretends that they are the one immortal until they're not anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different thing when the medical people tell you yeah. uh, there's nothing more we can do. All of a sudden, for some whatever period of time that they announce, which, by the way, I don't think they know. They do their best guess, given their experience and, and knowledge of the subject. Um, and, you know, they said that if I do this chemo that I start tomorrow, that maybe six to eight months before I start having symptoms of the cancer. Um, I think that could just as well be two months or a year. It's, it's They're doing the best they can in trying to figure that out. But every person, every human body is different and will react different to the medication. But it changes your 
outlook entirely. For mm. instance, I don't know if I brought this up with you or not anymore, but I have a limited amount of time where before this, I could pretend maybe I would become one of the ancients and live to be 95. Yeah. And now I can't pretend that anymore. So how do I choose the books I read? And speaking of Housewives of Wherever, am I still allowed to watch the trashy TV shows that I like? You know? <laughs> or is that a waste of time? I don't know how to make those decisions. Um, it's a... Uh, I, th there's a lot of things I would like to get all in order before I die so that the person who has to clean up behind me and my house and all of that stuff won't have too tough a time. My God, there's a lot to do. And, I'm, and I've done all the big stuff like the end of life documents, the will and the proxies and all of that. That stuff has all been done for more than a year. But it's... Um, all of the little stuff that would that she's going to have to hunt for everywhere if I don't make a may you know give her a little book of here's where you find all of this and um, there are things like um, I've known for the longest time that I no big deal make the phone calls and purchase my cremation I can't make myself do it I mean I I assume I will eventually but I can't make myself pick up the phone and do that. Um, and sometimes, but, but, you know, a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that before death or before they know they're going to die. They they already have funeral plans. Yes, I understand you know, that. So. It's not new. Um, yeah. That, but still, now in a new position, I'm having trouble fi picking up the telephone to do that. Yeah. Uh, more than that, I'm not. I haven't even taken the time to look into it online yet. Um, and. You, you know, you know what I found. What I what, what, what I found interesting was your first thought uh, when I when when you first talked to me about this wasn't uh, I got to make funeral arrangements. I got to do this. I got to do that. Your first thought was, I'll never be able to see how Trump turned out. Yes. Oh, I am so pissed off about that. <laughs> I am no. so pissed off. And I had been saying that. For the longest, even before I knew I had cancer, man, I have I've got to let me live until I see the outcome of the Trump era. I want to know how it ends, or at least, you know, the end of him as president. It'll, it'll, it'll be many, many, many years, probably decades before we clean up behind him politically. But, um, man, I am pissed off about that. It's not the thing I think I should be pissed off about in this circumstance, but it is. Well, you know, you will always, I, I don't know, maybe I would think about something like, gee, I'll never get to see the next season of Doctor Who or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, things like that have occurred to me, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... Uh, let's hope the, the let's, hope, is, let's hope all the shows let's I hope read. all the shows let's hope now. all the shows you like are canceled before you go right. yeah. <laughs> but i still don't it's the book problem there you know which ones to read and which ones do they all have to be serious or can i read a detective novel <laughs> yeah and the old question how ripe should the bananas be when i buy them yeah how much what <laughs> how ripe should the bananas be when i buy them oh, well, you know <laughs> My mother's daughter, I took care of my mother during the last four months of her life when yeah. she was dying. Yeah. And when I met with her doctor the first time after I got to her place, he told me how he had explained to her what had happened and if she did this or if she did that. But she had approximately three or four months to live. And he told me that she, my mother sat there for a little while looking down and she thought about, I guess, what the doctor had been saying. And then she looked up and looked at him and said, are you telling me I shouldn't buy any green bananas? No, it's an old line, but I didn't know my mother was that funny, <laughs> and especially in the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, um, gee, I, you know, I, as I say, you know, sometimes in this situation, I don't know what to say. You know, I mean, nobody uh, does. Nobody does. And, and somebody left a comment. So the fact that you're laughing while we were talking makes me feel good that I've done something. Yeah. Well, and somebody, one of the, my blog readers, left a note on one of my posts about the cancer and what's going on. He said that she wanted her friends and what family was left to come and be with her and talk and talk and talk and talk about everything under the sun. And I think that's, I crave being with people. And sometimes I get, 
I don't want to say depressed. I don't think I'm depressed, but I get fearful and I get just <laughs> kind of beaten down. And then I go meet a friend for lunch or I have a conversation with you or even a phone conversation with someone. And I come away from it. Everything's fine. Yes, I know what's happening. I haven't forgotten that, but I can handle that and I'll get on with what I have to do today. It makes all the difference. People make every kind of difference. Yeah, yeah. And that woman who left that that note on my blog, she's absolutely right. I want to talk about everything. I want to talk about Trump. I want to talk about Pittsburgh. I want to talk about books I'm reading or how to choose a book if you've got any good ideas and so on and so forth. Um, plus, I want you to let me talk about what I'm going through now and then too. And you don't have to do much, but listen, you, there's no solution there's, that you can give me. Um, but you know, for now and for some period of time, I physically I feel terrific. Um, here's a little bit of a secret about this. Because I feel so good and I've kind of, just this week in the last two or three days, um, I've started to get, it doesn't, that I, I, that I want to live. I want to live for a lot longer. And not that I didn't ever want to feel that way, but I kind of accepted what had been told me. Now I'm feeling, damn, can I make this, how can I stretch this out a little longer? I'm not ready. Um, and then I know that, and then I start thinking, you know, what I want is, they tell me I can hold off symptoms with this chemo for a good while, a little while, and um, and then I'll start having them. And I'm hoping that toward the end, I feel physically bad enough that I don't care anymore. That I want I, that would take the fear away. But, well, there that yeah, um, you know it's interesting because I you know as I say I've always had a fear of death and so uh, uh, this makes me doubly uncomfortable for that. Okay, <laughs> but to hell with how I feel. It's how you feel. That's really what it, <laughs> what it's all about, you know. Um, but uh, I I paid <clears throat> attention to a lot of people who who were dying. And what they did with their end of life. And I found that, for instance, I think it was Ingrid Bergman who went back to Sweden and said goodbye to everybody. And I felt that really, rather than being hit by a truck and all of a sudden one day you're alive and the next day you're dead, she had time to go back and see the people she wanted to see or make peace with the people she wanted to make peace with, that there was, that that the fact that she was dying and knew she was dying kind of became a blessing of sorts because, I understand because that. you can put, a, you can put several, a, a period on your life, you know? Several people, including you, um, have said, can I come visit you? And, um, and Absolutely. I mean, fortunately, I now live, you know, not in teeny tiny Manhattan apartment anymore. I have a bedroom and a bathroom. It's almost like being in your own hotel suite. And absolutely, people, you know, people who live far away, I'm not getting on an airplane. I just don't have it in me. Airplanes are just so awful to fly in anymore. Right. Right. And, um, and I'm not... You know, there was a first thought of maybe I'd go to New York. I have lots of friends there. It's the city where I really, truly belong. It is my home. Um, but I just I just can't for a number of reasons. So having a few people come here to visit for a few days, like Bergman going to Sweden, is just terrific. It's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so anyway, your doctors, have you seen them since we talked last? And uh, what are they... If so, what have they been saying about all of this? It, everything is the same. I've got this little piece of paper here that I start this chemo tomorrow. Yeah. And I had asked about the chemo. The point of the chemo is it can't cure the two tumor locations, but it can slow the growth so I have a longer period of asymptomatic life before cancer symptoms yeah. start yeah. kicking in. Yeah. And it says here, I had asked about I, the... Uh, the side effects because it's a different mixture of chemicals than I had before that did kill the cancer for a while. And they're fairly mild. Um, it's, uh, I might have some flu symptoms for a couple of days. There are two different ones that they're giving me at a time. And some mild, quote, in quotes, um, 
nausea. And the other one, I will have this, I could have a sensitivity to cold and some neuropathy. And the thing is that they, they don't know. Each person has a different reaction. Right. I could get all right. of these or not. I could have, they might be heavy, they might be light. Um, but that sounds to me like tolerable stuff compared to some. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can manage that. The other big thing, change the subject. Well, I, I, the, we should change the subject because life goes on and so do you. And on. you're not you're not going and anywhere soon. I want to show you something. Okay. I, what, when we hang up, what I am going to do hmm. is vote. I live in a vote by mail state. And this is my ballot. Okay. Backwards now. But um, two sides. It's a big ballot this year. And, um, and I've done my homework, so I know what I'm voting for. So I'm going to fill in all the little boxes when we're done and send off my my ballot. Everybody needs to go vote. Every This may be the most important election of our lives, old people's lives, that long. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of a... I feel a little bit different than you because I live in New York where whether I vote or not, I know it's going to go New York City. It's going to go liberal. All right. Uh, but local races are certain. That's what everybody thought in the last presidential election. Well, no, here, you know, no, here's what happened in the presidential election. Let's be honest about it. Uh, Hillary won by three million votes in the popular vote. But it was an electoral vote. And what I don't like is the electoral vote because my vote gets kind of bundled down to like 78 votes or whatever the electoral college is. And I don't feel it's one man, one vote, okay, or one person. So that means vote. you shouldn't vote just because you don't well, like the I don't, way you would I do don't, it? I don't feel in the presidential race that I, I knew that New York was going to go for Hillary. There was no question about that, okay? And overwhelmingly, New York State went for Hillary. So that means you shouldn't vote? You haven't answered my question. Well, I voted, but it doesn't matter if I vote. My vote does not count. Yes, it does. What if everybody who voted the way you do decided that their vote didn't matter? Well. What would happen then? Well, then uh, somebody would win by two votes, and that's because there were four votes. <laughs> but... You know, I mean, the the point I'm making is is that the local races and there well, are good well, arguments for well, yeah, well, it. Now is not the time to well, argue it. No. Right now, we have an important election. Where, Afterwards, yeah, go work. But for where that. I'm going with this is in this particular case, local races are incredibly important, and yes, one vote are. does count. You know, yes. and uh, and so therefore, uh, I will, uh, I guess, uh, go a block and vote. <laughs> you know, See, uh, I don't even have to leave my desk. I don't know where I it is. I got to find. Mail. I got to find out where it is. But uh, 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 and they always spell my name wrong, so I have, they have a hard time finding me. But you know, anyway, I and then I had to fill out forms because I wasn't. Part the of same. your name? Do they spell wrong? One N. Oh, see, every time I tell people my name, I yeah. always say Bennett with two N's and two T's. Because yeah. of that, some yeah. people leave the second T off too. Right, right. So I, I, uh, my name, I've always had trouble with. Sometimes they put a T in there, you know, whatever. Uh, but they had it wrong, so they corrected it, and then I got my mail, and they didn't correct it. You know, it, it's it's been always been a pain in the ass. But anyway, uh, you know, I think that the local races are important, and I think uh, while I know that here in Harlem. Uh, certainly our uh, congressional representative has never been a Republican. I mean, it was Adam Clayton Powell, and then it was, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, oh, God. Um, uh, you know, and then it, now it's another guy. Now, Doesn't it's been three Adam guys. Clayton Powell sound historical? I mean, it was a long, I was, I lived there when he was a congressman from Harlem, but it seems, it just feels like so long ago now it's that he's become an historical figure that. Well, I know, live on Adam Clayton Powell Jr. <laughs> Boulevard. Thank you very much for that extra long name on my <laughs> mailbox. Yeah. Instead of First Street, you mean. <laughs> well, I write, I say 7th Avenue, fuck it, because I, to begin with, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was a crook, all right? Why are we naming a street after him? At that one block down, we got Malcolm X Boulevard. I would rather have that on my mail, okay? Well, that isn't where you bought, uh, rented an apartment. Exactly. You're stuck. Yeah. 
Adam Clayton. It's not just Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Can't you it's Adam ACP Clayton Powell Jr. Jr. <laughs> yeah, they, sometimes they do ACPJR, okay, or ACP. Uh, mm-hmm. But I've just put Seventh Avenue because the post office knows that address. So yeah. you know, and if I tell a cab driver take me down to Seventh Avenue and and uh, 116th, they know exactly what I'm saying. You know, so it, it, these are honorary names they gave these streets. There are a lot of them around Manhattan. Oh yeah, I mean, there's even a cousin, Brucey Way. <laughs> Is that you know, really? yeah, yeah. Uh, for for a disc <laughs> are you and I the last two people who know who he was? <laughs> it, 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 no, he still is still alive and knows who he is. So you know, uh, but uh, anyway, um, so so uh, he, there are a couple of things I guess we should talk about in the time remaining. One of which is Pittsburgh, since uh, you became Jewish and I am Jewish, and you're probably more Jewish than I am, because converts are always more Jewish than the real Jews. Uh, how do you how do you relate to that? Well, this morning I'm just embarrassed that he's foisting himself on the funerals. Yeah, I'm yeah. so embarrassed. I mean, he embarrasses any thinking human being every single day, but. But that's just awful. He's been just asked not to awful. come by the mayor of Pittsburgh yes. and by the and rabbi of, of the temple. And, and to insinuate yourself and bring a whole entourage of, of people, you know, that and, and apparently from what I heard this morning, they've cordoned off the area around the, the temple, be preparing for the president and his safety. And when people just want to go and have their funeral, you know. And that's just, and especially when, the mayor asked him not to come. And the mayor didn't say not come altogether. Wait a week after the funerals and come is what well, he did, said. Didn't Obama and in a situation similar to this wait a week rather than inter- week? Uh, Didn't Obama when there was a tragedy like this, I can't remember which one. I b- remember him waiting a week before he went somewhere. because other presidents have done of, that altogether. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but there's, th- that's just embarrassing. This was... I mean, it's such a horrible, horrible tragedy that it takes a long time to, to, I don't know, internalize, it, think about it, work it through your mind, um, and and I just, I, I just can't believe how, how many people got this insensitive, yeah. and and I know perfectly well he is, but I can't believe he is this time. And it well, remember that black church that got bombed, and mm-hmm. how many how many blacks died in that one. I think that was somewhere around the same amount of people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, this is the largest ever in the United States of killing of Jews. Well, of Jews, but I'm saying that not the racially, I think that the bombing of the black church was equivalent. I, I, I seem to remember the number 11 or You 12. mean in the 60s? No, a few years back, just a few oh, years okay. back. Yeah. Right, but I thought we were talking about a Jewish hate rather than well, black. Well, I mean, but, look, let's be honest. This is the great, greatest mass killing. This is I thought of this yesterday. The greatest mass killing of Jews since the Holocaust. Well, at least in this country. It, it, well, no. I mean, I think. I'm not sure, but anyway. um, I mean, you'd have to. I, I don't think it matters all that much to be correct about that right now, but it's just such a horrible. It's such, it's so hateful, so awful, and in this, obviously, from all the coverage they've been talking about of the neighborhood the temple is in, and the people who go, and um, and what a cohesive, long-term neighborhood that goes back what a hundred years or more of, of a sensibility that people who live there have about their about their home, their neighborhood, their community, and to just barge in. It seems to me it's a terribly private thing for them, and to have the president just barge in uninvited is a, is just. Most oh. presidents yeah. have waited till after the funerals to go down and pay their respects because. Well, you see, I'm so cynical. I just think he does it because he can't stand a day without being the center of attention. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, he co-ops every event he possibly can, and what I love, you know, uh, there's an old saying. And it's a saying that I've lived by and everybody else should live by that if, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Uh, <laughs> and fake it convincingly. He cannot, <laughs> he cannot convincingly 
do that kind of thing. I mean, when he can't he, even read the teleprompter. Well, he reads a teleprompter like he's a kid being asked to get up in class and read something from a book he didn't want to read. Yeah. Okay, uh, and he <clears throat> he just reads it, and he has no ability at conveying sympathy. I mean, Obama was very good at it. Uh, even George Bush tried his best. But Trump, you know he's reading it, but he doesn't feel it, you know. And it, it's just, it's, it's embarrassing. It's just <laughs> embarrassing. We don't need your fucking sympathy. And by the way, you're still not washing off the taint that your rhetoric has caused an atmosphere that creates this kind of event. Well, he's already denied that, and so is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, they always you know, keep bringing up uh, Bernie Sanders guy uh, shot a uh, senator. Yeah, but he didn't die. And secondly, uh, Bernie That's Sanders the- Bernie Sanders wasn't running around uttering incendiary statements. You know, and there's no comparison. That's what is a. What, he, at what no is point did Bernie Sanders ever what give a, a sense of permission for this kind of act. Trump has. You know. This is. A, well, the two you know, of us are. There tra- aren't words for this kind of thing. There just yeah. aren't words. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's hard for us to talk about it because everybody knows what we're going to think about it. You know, I would love to know how some right winger justifies. Uh, all this animosity this man has created in this country. And as, as I say, his number one job as president, or any president's job, is to protect the American public. I think we will agree with that. That's the main mission, okay, mm-hmm. above any other. Uh, whether you protect them by military or whatever, to the protection of the public. When you say incendiary things that give a sense of permission to a mentally deranged human being to go out and either mail bombs or go into a synagogue and start shooting, you're violating that very tenet of what you should be living up to, and that is protecting the American public. And mm-hmm. and he should be ashamed of himself. And he it, it's, There's no shame. He it, doesn't know that exists. Listen, he would have won. He would have even won me over. Well, not really, but he would have won a lot of people over if he at least had said, you know, maybe what I've said has given the sense of permission to people, and maybe I have to bring my uh, uh, ratchet down my rhetoric, which I thought was, you know, just politics. But maybe there's more to it than that. And everybody would have said, good for you. But he would never do that because he doesn't have that in him. He doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe it, no. You know, and Jared Kushner, who is a uh, a devout Orthodox Jew. Oh, he took a phone call on Saturday. Did he take a phone call on Saturday? From the president, yes. Uh, Anyway. He he is well, he's more orthodox than you and I are. Okay, is that <laughs> why he isn't informing him that now would be a bad time to go down there and he should wait a week, and that Here, maybe he doesn't think it is a bad time. We don't know. He never speaks about anything. Well, it, it, well, I mean, Jared, as uh, any uh, orthodox Jew would probably be able to give him counsel on this. You know what I'm saying? But no, I don't know anything about the man. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. except that uh, he uses his position to try to get more money to save his real estate business. Well, well neither the, neither do do the rest of us. So you know, um, uh, because he never says anything. I think I heard him speak the other day. I'm glad he doesn't speak. He has a very ineffective voice. You know, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's just you know it. But how do you think the midterms are going to turn out? You know, I don't want, I don't, I'm not interested in prognostication. What I am going to do is sit up as late as I can (laughs) and watch all the returns. Um, One of the things about living on the West Coast after nearly half a century gone is that when you're ready to settle down around dinner time and watch TV and see all the returns, you already got some coming in. You know, they already are predicting who's won Eastern states. So you don't have to wait until 10, 11 o'clock. I remember when I was working at KML in San Francisco. And it was the uh, 
I think it, it was Reagan who was running at the time. I, I, again, for the, I think the second time or something like that. Anyway, uh, I was living in <coughs> California, but I was going to go do uh, election coverage uh, starting at 7 o'clock because at 8 o'clock the polls closed in California. And as I'm driving to the station... The election has been called for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and I just I thought they weren't I, supposed to do that. I, I don't I keep just, track I, of that. I didn't know whether I should just turn around and go home. <laughs> it was a waste of you my really time. You really feel bad for the people in Hawaii. I mean, by the time their polls close, it is long decided. Oh, yeah. No matter oh, yeah. how close it is. Yeah. So, you know, I mean... It's nice to know when it gets to California, they go, oh, that's the pivotal state. But it's never the pivotal state. Florida's the pivotal state. Well, Ohio's the pivotal Ohio state. and some others, too, yeah, you know. But. Uh, it, but you're right. What you said earlier is the local the local uh, selections make, make are going to make a huge difference or not uh, this time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everybody on television, all the pundits are prognosticating and... I don't think there's any way to call this, nor do I think we should spend so much time doing that. We've gone way over our normal time, but let me just bring this up, and then we I guess we got to go. This guy, okay. Gillum, who's running for governor of Florida. In Florida, Who's running yes. a very, very tight race, okay? Um, uh, the president today came out and started said he should he should just quit the race because he he committed a criminal act by paying eighteen hundred dollars paying eighteen hundred dollars for tickets to hamilton right uh i'm sorry uh tickets to hamilton to begin with go for about twelve hundred but you know he's overpaying for them what is the big deal whether this guy got tickets to hamilton or not and how does that make him any less capable of being governor of the state of florida and we could get into more what about ism with all that uh, yeah, uh, with all of the president's uh, suspicious economic activity, financial activity. Yeah, well, that we'll never find out about because he won't f- let us see his tax returns. You know, I, I what I don't get, and this goes back to something that he doesn't even know the existence of shame, is that this morning he announced that he wants to take away birthright citizenship of children of of immigrants who are born here and the constitution says right there i think it's the 14th anybody born within the borders of the united states is a citizen and he said he can do this with just an executive order even though it's in the constitution but the thing that got to me is that which he's wrong about but the thing that most got to me is he said that we're the only country in the world that has birthright citizenship canada mexico almost all of europe has the same thing and he's done this kind of thing on every topic you can think of over and over and over again. Outright lies. And nothing happens. Nobody cares. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah, well. Hey, listen. We, yes. we went way over time. But, you know, why not? What you have to say is I find totally interesting. And, uh, we both talk too much. We well, we, we, we well, I talk for a living, and you write for a living, and <laughs> occasionally you talk for a living. So you know, it's good either way, darling. Good talking to you. You you sure. look, in you look great. Okay, that's all I can say. I feel terrific. That's one of the hardest things about this is that, I, physically, I feel wonderful. Yeah, I I just hate when you go to a funeral, and the body is lying there. And they say, doesn't he look great? <laughs> and you go, not particularly because he doesn't have a pulse and he's at room temperature, you know? I mean, what do you mean he looks great, you know? How many times have you been to a funeral where they, where the casket was open? Uh, on maybe one occasion. Yeah, I, that's what I, I, I find that kind of... <laughs> doesn't happen much I days. find it kind of creepy. But I have been in a room with, a, with my best friend who had just died, and that was that was not pleasant, you know. Um, but we won't get into that. You're terrific, and I love you, dear. And uh, you you uh, you stay stay looking healthy, and we'll talk to you in two weeks from now, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, Ronnie. Love Ronnie. Love having her on. And I hope you do, too.
Anyway, uh, let me see. Let me get some things going here. First of all, I want to just uh, uh, make mention of the fact that uh, uh, there are a few, few little problems we're having here at GabNet, and you should be aware of them. The people who handle the server up in uh, Canada that serves out my uh, iTunes files and files that feed the on-demand and so on uh, uh, are not working right. Uh, and so therefore, I'm having a hard time porting stuff to, uh, to iTunes. I have, uh, and, and to also to our Roku channel. However, however, I have gone to extremes to be able to do the uh, uh, on-demand here, so that if you want to listen to any of our programs, just use the on-demand section. Or you can listen to our 24-7 channel, which is uh, always available as well. Anyway, and the other thing is, is that on uh, starting on, uh, what is it? Does, I guess it would be uh, Thursday. Uh, Skype is uh, ending the use of what they call Skype 7, which is what we use for this program. And we don't know what, how that's going to affect the use of 7. The, the thinking is that they will allow you to use 7, they just won't be supporting it anymore. In other words, they won't do, be doing updates and they won't be doing fixes on it or anything like that, which is fine with me because it works just fine. And we'll see how long we can keep using it. If it comes to a point where I can't use it, I'll make some attempt to use the Skype 8 point fuck. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. And I will have to just wait and see uh, what, the, uh, what, what the deal is there. Um, it, 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 uh, it, I may be able to get to work fine. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, I use a program here that reads the screen, among other things. In other words, this thing that you see here, which nobody is calling so I can show it to you, that's the Skype screen, okay? Now that I can just do by bringing it up and saying, go to the Skype screen, but under the new Skype, it doesn't come up. And I have to use a subsidiary program in order to bring it in, and the whole thing is rather iffy all right I iffy jiffy so uh i uh I, I don't know how that's going to bear for the program being done live the other way i could do it the uh, the video being done uh the other way i could do it is by doing it on the mac over here and that it does seem to work with but the w worst part about it is the way in which uh, skype renders the picture uh, on the screen is just horrible, just horrible. And uh, I have no idea uh, how that's gonna, gonna look and, 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 and uh, uh, ferret itself out. Hello to Phil. Hey, how, how you doing? Still haven't gotten your microphone fixed, huh? Uh, no, but I think I figured out what it was. What? Uh, now I've just gotta go home early enough in the day to call the place that, I, uh, that helps me out. I think it's a issue of security allowing the microphone to work with Skype, uh, and it's not in Skype; it's uh, in the security area. And uh, so they told me what to do, but I'm, I'm just going to have the guy help me on online. Well, uh, this the security section. Yeah. What what where, security section in what in uh, in the Mac uh, in the, from a hobby in the Mac? Well, yeah. uh, hmm, I think. I know where that permission is. Actually, it's under secure. Yes, it's under security. Well, don't yeah. do it. Don't do it now. But no. it's under security, and if you go there, it'll ask you for that particular thing that it wants to okay, and then you go yes. Yeah. If I'm I not think, mistaken. I think that's. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, I wrote Personas. Mm -hmm. uh, they got back to me with that information, and uh, I sent it off to the people at Obedia. Yeah, well, and well, it's you know. a pretty simple thing to do. I do it all the time because it, under Mojave, it has asked to reestablish that a certain program I'm using is okayed by me. Yeah, you know. And uh, I, anyway, hello, Brian Ludwig. How are you? You might not be able to hear me. Oh, Give me a we, sec. we hear you. We hear oh, you, you do? Yep. Okay, sometimes it likes to ref default to default communication device, and then i got to manually yeah. set it back to this Yeti microphone that I purchased yeah. on Amazon that's USB-enabled. 
But anyway, getting back to you for a second, Phil, uh, it's a pre pretty simple thing to do. I think I know what it's asking you to do. Yeah. And if you go to security, it might, and privacy, it might actually have a thing that says, do you want to allow this? Because it's recognizing yeah. that it's there. You say yes, and the next thing you know, you're up, you're up and running. Very simple. Yeah. All right. Very simple. Well, I'll, I'll play with it later. I'm on a different computer. I'm on the uh, Mac uh, Book Pro, uh, not on the Mac Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the new uh, the new uh, Macs today that they came out? Uh, I saw that there was going to be a new MacBook. It was an Air. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I hadn't seen it yet. Uh, I'm I'm done buying. <laughs> yeah. Here here's what these fuckers at Apple do. Okay. Yeah. And and the reason why I'm I'm I feel like shit that I'm wedded to their ecosystem. Okay. Because mm -hmm. of this, but they just came out with the new Mac Minis. And yeah. believe it or not, the starting price for a new Mac Mini is about a hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. No, a hundred dollars cheap. A <laughs> hundred dollars cheaper than it was. But let me tell you the difference. None of these Mac Minis come with a hard drive. Oh. They all come. Guess what? With flash. A flash drive. How big? So, uh, the starting one for that seven. 99 price or whatever is yeah. 128 gigabytes well that's pretty good that's what they were no no they were no, the, the the intro one was the one the one that uh, the, no they were 500 the hard drive in it that's yeah. the entry level one? yeah and the one you had it gave me uh, you sold me it was a gig that was a gig I mean a terabyte a, a, a terabyte and right. and then it had uh, it had a, a flash drive attached to it, so it was a fusion drive, they called it. Right. It very preppy and very good because the other versions here are a little slower, okay? Yeah. Well, this will make it faster, but the thing is that I, I decided if I wanted to go, like, full yeah. everything on the new Mac Mini, you know, they go up to 64, 64, 64 gigabytes of memory and so wow. on. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good, huh? You know how much it yeah. costs to put in sixty four gigabytes of memory? Seven hundred dollars. Try twelve hundred. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and and do you know how much it would cost if I were to go out and somehow it was easy for you to do it in there, and I could add the memory myself? Do you know how much it would cost me? Five hundred dollars. Uh, probably le much less than that. Maybe a couple well, of hundred bucks. I I have sixteen gig, I think, in the Mac Pro. And I was thinking about, I went online and I can buy memory, uh, I can po fully populate it to 64. Yeah, and you can do that yourself for, with the Mac Pro. Yeah, I can do that myself. Yeah. And it's like 500 bucks. But with the, with the Mac Mini, they won't let you. Although in the old Mac Minis, you could. There was a place in the bottom to put in more memory. Uh, your the one you got from me is fully populated. Yeah, That's got 16. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I sat down and I, on their on their thing, I, I, I added everything <laughs> that would be, you know, yeah. 64 gig, two terabyte flash, the highest possible uh, 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 Chip. CPU, whatever. And, uh, and then the video card. And uh, uh, no, no video card. They, they have the same video card in all of them. Oh, okay. Because okay. the one you got from me has an advanced video card. Yeah, but guess what? Yeah. Came out to, ready? Forty-two hundred dollars. Might as well get a. Well, That's no, Mac Pro's. Yeah. Why don't you get a Mac Pro? Mac Pro comes in at about. You can get it for about twenty-eight hundred, and then populate it with the memory and add the hard drives and do all how of that. Come, how come? You know the new Mac Pro, which I don't think is out yet. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you fully populate it, it's fourteen thousand dollars. Well, yeah, but that if you have them do it. Yeah. I would never. I when I got this Mac my old tower here yeah. uh i i got it unpopulated i mean i got it with just you know whatever it came with and i sl slipped all the all the memory in it and you know got it up to 32 gigs yeah you know but i don't know i just i just think they're kind of shitheads because what they're doing is by doing the flash drive thing they're kind of forcing you to buy your storage space although there is a positive side of it you can go out and get yourself one of these little uh, external drives, even the tiny ones, and use them to handle all your apps and things like that. You can fill that up 
with the app, yeah. or you can even use it as a uh, as a boot drive, as right. well. So you know that's what I did with my iMac when that hard drive was no longer working. I started I I put the the system on that little drive, and when it's plugged in, it's used as the boot drive. It boots it right up. It takes a while, yeah. but it boots it up, and then it runs fine. It's like a brand new iMac. <laughs> So and you don't have enough computers? <laughs> oh, I've got enough. I mean, yeah. yeah, I've got what? How many have I got in this room? I got one, two, three, four, four in this room, and five, six, seven in the other room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I I understand. Uh, I'm sitting here, iPad, uh, Mac Pro, what? MacBook Pro, uh, Apple Ten uh, phone. And an Apple Watch, you know, they, they got me. Yeah, well, I mean, so you're in the ecosystem. That's what, it, what it's all about. And, uh, you know, I don't mind being in the ecosystem. It's just that they find ways to screw you over, you know. Oh, yeah. Like they just added new iPads and they're cheaper. But again, um, the cheaper version of it gives you less memory so you want to add more memory you know and it's one thing or another because now you can have up to i don't know 212 k of memory yeah. and whatever i mean they're they're, they're they're going cheaper on one end because you're getting something that isn't fully populated well you yeah. know the well yeah you get what you pay for my uh, uh ipad pro it's the 12 inch one mm -hmm. and you know what it's too big you want to know uh, something? The new one is almost 13. Really? Yes. Uh, it's 12.8. 12, 12. But it yeah. has the, it's the same size because it just moves out to the edge of the bezel. I see. See, where you have space around it, th this moves all the way out to the bezel. So the size, the physical size doesn't change, but the screen goes from a 12.1 or something like that to a 12.9, uh, I think. Yeah. So. And the other thing I found is that's a waste is having the cellular. Uh, I don't think I've ever used the cellular oh, on I use the it, iPad. I use it all all the time on the iPad. Yeah. Although you can get along very nicely if you're using it at home a lot, you know. But, well, if you've got a, a hotspot on your phone, why do you need the... Uh, yeah, I, need? I haven't tried that, though. You know, so, oh. uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I've got cellular on this watch. Yeah. You know, and I never use it. <laughs> okay. But the day is going to come when I'm going to need it. So you know what the hell? Well, yeah. You know, for for 120 hey, bucks a year, it's not a problem. What? I I uh, listened to your uh, uh, for first half hour, mm -hmm. and it may uh, not to get off of Apple, but uh, it was uh, it was interesting. You know, I have a friend that passed away a, about a year and a half ago, and he's been an extremely close friend of mine. And it's amazing how many times I just look at his phone number in my phone and want to call him and say, "Hey, how you doing?" and you know what's going on. And I and I know that the he passed away. He uh, he found out in like January that he was terminal, mm -hmm. and by March he was dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, every Sunday I went to his house and visited him. Uh, he was he was in a bed. He couldn't get out of bed. But we talk every Sunday. And, you know, uh, those, those kinds of memories and those kinds of things, you, you just can't discount. And the fact that you're having these conversations with your uh, ex-wife, Ronnie, yeah. uh, is, is going to be very valuable to you as time goes by. I don't, I don't care if it's valuable to me. No, no, no. You it, it, to, your own, to your own feeling. Because, you know, when the person passes, they're, they're done. You're the one that has to uh, deal with uh, the void. Uh, in in your life and and believe me my friend passing was definitely a void in my life yeah well you know i mean that uh, you're probably right uh i uh i'm supposed to go see her at some point and and to tell you the truth i mean to be honest with you the prospect bothers me a little bit you know oh, i i understand you know i understand uh, but uh because i I don't want to feel there's a time when I'm going to get on an airplane. That's the last I'm going to see her, you know? Yeah. You know, I, it, things like that hit me. And, and I guess there's a selfish part of us. I could guess, you know, it, it's easier to deal with somebody that 
that passes away immediately. You know, they uh, have a heart attack and, and it's done rather than but, someone well, that you have to go through the grieving process. What with. I was saying, what I was saying to her is there, there is something positive to someone who's dying slowly because they get to say goodbye to everybody. They get to say, I'm sorry to all the people they might have had arguments with. You know, you get to, yeah. you get to literally button up your life, whereas if you die, <laughs> oh, oh boy, hey, <laughs> turn off your microphone, Brian. Oh, you can hear that from across the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, you, yeah. Have, you have a Yeti. Uh, we can hear that from Fresno. Yeah, you know? uh, can't hear my bowels move. Yeah, as powerful as this motherfucker. By the is. way, folks, what I was saying, though, could, was, what I wanted yeah. to say was, has their cancer come back? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Haven't you heard the pancreatic? This is the one. You were no, talking not about the with pancreatic, pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Other cancers. You know that the the other thing that's difficult to deal with right is, that. for instance, I'm cancer free right now. But what if in six months, all of a sudden, I get something else? You know, bladder oh, my cancer. Father. Uh, yeah, cancer. similar with this process. You know, and and so it's like you think you've been given a new lease on life, and then all of a sudden they take it away from you, and uh, uh, it's it's hard to stay positive uh, yeah. with that. Well, you this know? time it came I, back in her lung and her, I can't remember what the term was, the peritoneum or something it's called. Yeah. Uh, and they say it's inoperable. Yeah. So uh, you know um, that that's not good. You know, and and I I was so happy for her because so few people survive pancreatic cancer. Yeah, but she survived it. I mean, I, yeah, I know that never so came other back. other forms came in. Yeah. and fucked yeah. her up. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not fair, but you know, the life isn't fair, and no. uh, you know, it's it's hard to be given given a, a pass like with pancreatic cancer, and then all of a sudden you turn around and, uh, and, and, they, and they whip you again. Well, that was the most deadly of cancers you could get, okay? And, um, well, this one doesn't sound one. Too, uh, too good either. Yeah, but yeah. In, in this case, it's, uh, it's inoperable, but she doesn't feel any of it yet, you know? Yeah. And that's the part that I guess bothers her. If she wasn't feeling well, I suppose, mm -hmm. you know, it would... It would uh, 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 you know. Now this is in their lung, uh, you know, because yeah. my my friend who passed away had endopathic uh, pulmonary fibrosis, which is a deep scarring in the in the lungs. They don't know why you get it, but it's fatal. And some people it takes years to become fatal. And in his case, it was extremely aggressive. It only took months. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, he was hoping to get a lung transplant. Is that anything that is uh, no? No, no. Uh, apparently not. I mean, I'm leaving it up to her. I wish she would come to New York and see some specialists here in New York, but she doesn't want to do it. She feels her doctors are the best there are. And, you know, uh, yeah. and, and so, you know, it, it's her decision to make. Uh, I would yeah. love to see her come to New York and see some specialists. Yes, Brian. I was going to say, unless I would assume that one especially when you reach a certain age when you're up there in years mm -hmm. uh unless well two two conditions unless we get medicare for all mm -hmm. a and b cutting edge science science wise until we're able to actually clone and grow a new set of our own organs from like 30 years ago uh or something like that uh chances of getting a, a like a lung transplant or something for something like what your ex-wife is gone is going through and what your friend had gone through mm -hmm. a year ago phil are pretty much slim and none well you know at my age uh, all i have to look forward to is de is death and if it doesn't come soon uh then i have to look forward to real bad aging <laughs> you know you, you know it, it most of it i i know people your age and older and i some of them uh, look like their death warmed over, and others are totally uh, uh, vibrant, and there's no difference between them. Everybody, and a everybody ages at a different. It, it, no, but it's a lot of it is in in their in in your mind. You know how you how you view things. You know, I, I went to Kaiser today uh, to uh, get some glasses, new glasses. I uh, ordered them, and you know, you see people of all different ages. And, you know, some of them are vibrant and, uh, and, and others, you know, have the walker. Listen, and years ago, years ago, I went to Ronnie's uh, uh, class reunion 
Uh, they're, mm -hmm. they're her, I don't know, 30th or something like that. And we went into this room, and the one thing I noticed, one thing that suddenly became apparent to me was that everybody in this room was within a year of each other, or maybe right. six months of each other. Okay, yeah. um, if you have a center pole here, then one was over here and one was over here, so a yeah. year difference. But right. but they all were within a certain age range, uh, and you couldn't tell what that age was. Some of them looked young, some of them looked really old and dowdy. You couldn't tell, you know, because people yeah. age differently. And I think a lot of it has to do with, I don't know, I guess attitude, I don't know. Yeah. It, I, it's definitely attitude, you know, you know, and also, uh, you know, like my mother is 90 yeah. and she is the healthiest person I know. Doesn't take any pills, drives, uh, exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you would look at her and you think she's 60 yeah. and, uh, and she's always eaten healthy. She's always yeah. exercised. And, uh, and now, and, and, and these, and now that she's 90, uh, I, I doubt that she, uh, you know, other 90 year olds, uh, they look like they're bedridden. Yeah. You know, they got yeah, oxygen. She'll, like, she'll probably be like Abe Bogota, you know, she'll go on for years and years and years and years. And fortunately, and this is where I disagree with the both of you, where it's better to die quickly and rather than, you know, prolong the agony, uh, it'll just be like that when she finally does go, where well, minimal to no suffering whatsoever and you see I, I uh, be a peace. one thing that crosses my mind is I don't want her to have to bury me and so that keeps me alive <laughs> you know that uh, you know I, I I just I just don't want her to have to bury it's not a unique motivating factor either uh, yeah uh, Tony's joined us here at least we now we have a happy threesome Oh my! Uh, Four with you. Hmm? Four with you. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he's the host watching and taking pictures with his camera, Phil. Mm. Who who's taking pi pictures with his camera? It was the threesome joke he was saying. Uh -huh. He said, uh -huh. saying the, you're the host." And I, with you, four with you, the host. When Alex, I get, when yeah, I get, you're the one holding the camera and taking pictures of us. When I get four, it reminds me of the "Let It Be" album cover. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, let me see here. What uh, what is there to talk about? Oh, quite a bit. Oh, there's plenty. You know, uh, you were saying that you thought it was inappropriate for Trump to go to uh, Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They said a Christian rabbi down there did too. What kind of Christian rabbi? Yeah, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 What's right. his he name? Uh, uh, your your Jewish. vice president, vice president asshole. Uh, he, Vice he, President Fundy he, 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 he presented a rabbi who was like one of these, uh, um, Jew for Jesus, G Jew for Jesus rabbis. Oh my God. You know, I mean, just what's wrong, that, it, 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 what's wrong with it? It's in bad taste considering what yeah. happened, Phil. That's fucked up. You shouldn't do that. No, you know, know that. they, they wanted to respect those that lost their lives. And, and, uh, oh, they if they Jewish wanted to look to begin to with Phil out. to begin with Phil what you do is what every president has done in tragedies like this you don't go this soon to the tragedy you go a week later part of the reason wait, let let me finish Phil part of the yeah. reason is was that people have to have time to grieve number one and you should respect that and secondly you should do it because. Uh, you're going to make such a fuss by being there that you would rather it would be done a week later when it didn't have that same kind of impact. But no, the reason why Trump wanted to be there was for political purposes and because the election is coming up. And the mayor suggested, hold on a second, the mayor didn't say stay away. Nope, he no. said, please wait a week before you come here. And the reason he didn't wait a week is because in a week there'd be an Boy. election. She now, wait. now try and excuse that one, Phil. She will. Uh, you know, she will. Uh, the I, I'm not going. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to say this: if he didn't go, then they would have said no, he didn't no, go. No, no, and, no. And, he and, could and very he easily. Could, he can't win with he, you he, guys. He, he, no he, no, what he, he could very <laughs> easily have just said, "You know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to take the the mayor's suggestion. I'm going to go next week and let people have their time to grieve." 
before I go and pay my respects. And everybody would have said fine. What, Tim? I, to, Wait, I would agree listen. wholeheartedly. You agree. Um, um, and yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I, I feel everybody's got an opinion. And, uh, you know, and I'll respect that opinion. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if, if, that he if, went. if yeah. you're, if your loved one was killed in this event, and now here comes the president with motorcades, Secret Service security, uh, all descending upon this church, a rather hallowed place to begin with, and especially made more hallow by the tragedy that has just befallen it. Uh, you, 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 you know, you, you don't need that. You would feel used. It was still a crime scene. Yes. Yeah. They were still working. You know, you know, you know what can explain why he went today? Right. Follow the money. Right. He had too much so. invested in his rallies. The next seven days, he could get in there and get out. It would have it would have ruined the election if he waited one day. You know, Which, if he uh, waits till next week, it would have ruined the election for him because he's got rallies planned and lots of money. Spent. Uh, I would agree. What he said, Tim, was he didn't want this uh, animal. That did this uh, 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 horrendous act. Well, he has to, no. He had, did he call him an animal? Uh, he he called him something like that. Uh, uh, I don't know if he called him an animal, but uh, he called him crazy and, and some other things. Well, but, you know, uh, if he if he called him something which was incendiary, then he was being <laughs> doubly stupid because there's going to be a trial, right. and a good right. lawyer could use that as a defense. This guy that's all, is. That, that's all theater, Phil. That's theater because he didn't care anything about the ten people who almost got assassinated with pipe bombs. Didn't care one wince about that's that. Not, so that's not. Don't tell me true. he cares about somebody that attacked. Yeah. Do you know about Hyas? Yes. And the fact that he was ranting against Hyas, who helps immigrants. Yes. It would make the caravan look good because people would actually do some research. I I tweeted out. What if Trump called out the military to protect him from the protesters in Pittsburgh because those families protesting were the same make of children, families that the <laughs> caravan is? It's just people Wrong. trying to survive. Wrong. People what? trying to survive. Well, yeah, they may try to survive, and they were offered uh, everything that they needed and wanted in Mexico, but they're refusing it. And they're illegal. They're not entering legally. There is a no, system gonna, for legal they're, they're immigration. They're refugees. They're going to seek asylum, and we can either deny or allow the asylum. That is not illegal. And there's certainly no disease like Fox News is putting out. Now, would you they're say not that, diseases? Would you say that uh, the offer of Mexico? Uh, was would put them in harm's way for them to give them uh, food, housing, jobs, and uh, and welcome them into Mexico, which was some the of first them took country. The offer, but some of them didn't. Uh, they had well, the, the, what about our families that came here across the Atlantic? They came what legally. If they weren't allowed to come over. Oh no, they didn't you know come legally, Phil. They didn't it's come nativism. legally because Jews weren't allowed in this country during World War II. There, certain ethnic groups didn't even have rights. They didn't have birthrights. Chinese were born in the United you States. You should want every one of these refugees to find a place here in America because our people were denied it during World I War II. I want them to find a place in America. I want them to be vetted. I don't want well, people they're coming be in. Vetted. They, were, they do vetting on any refugee that comes into the country. Uh, it's what, highly, now, highly when they, vetting. Yeah, when they knock down the barrier and the wall, and then they uh, uh, they come in, and then what happens is they ask them to appear uh, for a hey, hearing. Phil, 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 you're talking like Fox News. I want you to take back the. Of course, I'm talking like down. Fox News. <laughs> you, I have, have a video. Hey, what what, what video. wall did they break down? Oh, you mean the one in Mexico? The one from Guatemala to Mexico, yeah. Yeah, well, they but they're not gonna, they're not going to come in illegally, so don't give me that crap. Uh, well, uh, Trump is doing the right thing uh, when they come. Listen, he's, he's, he's going to call out the military who legally doesn't, they don't uh, have any authority to do anything isn't anyway. going to do anything except provide logistics to uh, the Border Patrol so they don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, that's going to be really funny. No, this what? is just theater in, up through the elections, just like his birthright. Uh, amendment that he can't change with a, Here, a executive here's, here, order. Here's what I hope happens, Tim. Here's what I hope happens. 
as they've been coming north, they haven't been coming north in the same numbers they left Honduras with. No, they okay. haven't. And I hope that there will be five, to, what, 15, how many people, how many uh, troops is he putting at the border, 5,000? 5,200. 5,200. I hope only 300 people show up at the border. That would be and great. They need, they, and you know what? They're going to traumatize the military to have to attack civilians. We kill enough civilians. Do, do you know that Pompeo finally came out with a statement that we should end the, the, the slaughter in Yemen? In the, we're causing a famine in Yemen. It's a humanitarian crisis in Yemen because of us and the Saudis. Just like we've urged men, hedge municipally fuck with Honduras. How many civilians did we kill in Iraq? That wasn't enough. enough for America to have on our hands? Hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in Iraq. Hey, Tim. This is yep. Brian. The, uh, uh, I was just saying, not to mention all the hedge, hedge municipally fucking that the... Uh, United States government has been doing in Honduras, which is cool, not coincidentally where these immigrants are fleeing from. Is that correct? Right. We're doing nothing to help those. Well, those, we, those well, we did everything we could to destabilize that region, is what I'm saying, that, that country. We, we just we don't are. care about them anymore. We, we don't care about them. Because <laughs> we're not, you know why, Brian? Because we're not globalist. We're not allowed to be globalist Phil, anymore. Phil, why did you just send me a is, message that says, mm -hmm. I've got your caravan right here? Yeah, we're not globalists when it comes to that's, humanity. Uh, that's we the video of them uh, knocking down the wall. Country, oh, aren't we, Tim? Oh, oh, gee, they're knocking down the wall. Wow. Right, right, Brian. Take care. The, I thought they're... I th the, the, one that Tim, the one that Tim says doesn't exist. Well, uh, you... you uh, uh, even Trump admits it doesn't exist because he's asking for money to build it. No, no, this is the one at, uh, between Guatemala and Mexico. You know, you know, oh, wait a minute, that is an R wall. Has, has kept people and from it wasn't, wait a minute, hold country. on a second, Phil. It wasn't even a wall. It was a bridge. No, no, uh, there's a second group of migrants. And uh, this, this is a video from yesterday from the second group. Mm. Okay, can I say something, Phil? <laughs> yeah. The reason, they came, the reason they came to the border is because Mexico said they were not going to stop them initially. They weren't going to take out armed force against them. They were told that they would be allowed to come into Mexico and keep going. And then Mexico changed their mind at the last minute, probably because Jared called the people he's working with, and he negotiates with Mexico, and threatened them hey, that, Tim, does that we would have economic I sanctions against Mexico if they didn't at least attempt. They, Mexico had to kowtow to us, too. A public conspiracy, Tim. Does Tim, Tim, does Mexico have the right to change their mind as to their security? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I didn't say they couldn't, but I'm explaining why those people came actually to the border and then they were stopped at the last minute. What are they going to do? Well, this, this is the second caravan. I sent it to you in your messenger so you can okay, see. Okay, that's fine. Do you know how many refugees that the uh, countries in the Middle East take in from the wars we've had in the Middle East? Millions. <laughs> Millions of that refugees for years that we barely helped with, and we've cut back the funding for the help with the refugees in most of these countries as I well. Think, yo, what about ism? How about how many did the uh, did the Saudis take? How many did the Kuwaitis take? What about uh, what about what about what about what about? I'm yeah, talking about real refugees that went into Jordan and other countries like that. Hundreds of thousands. And and with, family. with the aid of the U.S. to help them. The aid that's been cut off, and the aid that was minimal, and we cut off all the uh, allowing Syrians to come here in the first place from a war we should have stopped a long time what ago. What happened to Angela Merkel? It was either today or yesterday. Angela. Or it's pronounced Angela. Right. Because, because, because America's not a shining beacon of freedom anymore. No, no, no. no. Angela Merkel. Uh, is having trouble uh, with her. Uh, uh, there's uh, an oh. there's an awful uh, authoritarian wave taking over all the countries, and because we don't have a decent leader like JFK or somebody like that in there to fight against the author the authoritarian takeover of these countries, this world is going to we're going to be in war most probably in the next. World decade. War Maybe we do have a decent leader, and that's what you're uh, that's what you're fighting against. Okay, that, that's certainly your opinion. I'm yes. saying the guy knows nothing what, about foreign aid. You know, and what does he know about foreign military? Service. What does he know about the military? He never served in it except at some doofus military academy. What's he got to know? He's he's done he's done major 
uh, excellent things for the military. Like uh, what? Every, like what? Everything. Like from, what? You can take from veterans' benefits to giving them raises to arming uh, them with the best equipment. Uh, how many? How many? How many? How many immigrants that got got a contract to work in the military got kicked out in the last two years? Quite a few. I, well, I don't know that you. Can... Even though they're fighting for our country, they kicked them out. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> They kicked out the people that were not U.S. full U.S. Wasn't citizens. A lot of them signed up and it worked in the military alongside U.S. citizens to earn their citizenship, and they canceled the program in most of them. Don't you have to be a citizen to be a member of the military? No. What about the federal? Sure, hey, no. hey, hey, what, hey, what, Alex, about the, what about to work in, uh, you know, like uh, building uh, no. military no. Uh, no. Uh, weapons and no. so forth? No. Uh, you know, I, I hey, seem to. Hey, Alex, tell them about the, 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 the veterans who are students in New York City that are getting kicked out because the VA is four months behind <laughs> paying them their, their, um, uh, uh, their education benefits under the VA Act. Well, I, well I, I don't know veterans. about that, but you can tell us about it. Well, there's, uh, I think, de Blasio and the county of whatever the county is of New York are going to have to help these veterans because they get these educational stipends to live and go to college, and they need that to pay for their dorms or whatever they're living. And those the payments, because he changed the law, the VA got behind by four months. Hey, uh, I tweeted it out earlier. Government. It's a news article, and I think the New York Times. I mean, that's the government. He just said because of him. No, and you want and you want the government to take over your health care? Come on, uh, look. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, he I, wants I he like wants to Trump to do what, something. Jeff? <laughs> what was the what was the act that uh, Trump signed uh, j just recently that said that if uh, you had to wait for medical care as mm -hmm. in the VA that you could just go out well, and get it? Was it was probably a sex act if it was. No, Trump. no, 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 no. There was a, it was something that he had signed recently. I just can't remember the name of it, mm -hmm. but uh, what it did was it greatly improved the service. Uh, and also, you can fire uh, people that work in the VA if they're not giving uh, good service. Uh, unlike uh, the Social Security Administration. Well, I'm happy with the Social Security no, Administration. I'm talking, I gave D oh. Tim a dig because he, he's, he's a career Social Security yeah. Administration. Oh, did, you heard, uh, did, you, did you hear Brian Schatz, the, uh, the senator from uh, Hawaii, state that Paul Ryan started dreaming of cutting Social Security when he was in college? And he's uh, going to get to do I, it if they get the election? Well, we want to. you realize he went to college as he well. got well, Come on. well, you I you know, fake news. Don't you want to? That's, not, uh, that's uh, true. Don't you want to support a young man's dreams? <laughs> Paul Ryan's got some crazy dreams up there. Oh, not man. even his wet dreams. He uh, has to go Alex. home and be with his family. He's not going to be around after January. You haven't seen Paul Ryan. Is he? You know, you haven't seen Rudy. You know, I haven't, haven't seen Rudy, Rudy at all. It's like it's Rudy got assassinated or something or murdered in his sleep. You haven't seen Rudy anywhere. <laughs> he may float up soon. I don't know. Rudy's working on something else. <laughs> Isn't he working with Mueller? Uh, you know, do, do, dealing with Mueller and uh, the, uh, uh, te well, the here's The latest thing things. they tried to do with Mueller? Well, they tried to pay some woman. How much money, Tim? Do you remember? Uh, well, it's twenty thousand dollars plus paying off the credit card debts, which we don't know how much. Okay, if she would say that Mueller uh, uh, molested her or uh, came on to her or whatever. Hey, you know, and, Giuliani's bit, uh, and, and, and then she, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do it for two hundred and fifty. No, and then she she came she came Who through and I guess told everybody that she had been offered this money by certain nefarious yeah. people. I doubt it. Come on. Well, hey, Alex, you know, we, Mueller, Alex, you Mueller asked what the FBI to investigate. Mueller asked the and Mueller asked the FBI to investigate it and look into it because he didn't want anybody to try and blunt him with some kind of false accusation. You don't that was this smart. Is some uh, was right uh, left wing uh, deal to try to discredit. How, how do you know that, Phil? Or, do you know and that? How do you know that somebody actually was offered twenty grand? Because she came speak. forward and said it. So did, so did that Sweatnik girl for, with Avenatti, and she's full of shit. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't say Sweatnik was full of shit. It's just the FBI felt that there wasn't enough credible information there to pursue it. Any. No, they didn't say any, Phil. 
They didn't say any. And I just did. Then Avenatti hey, still Alex. says that she has some credible information. Yeah, well, you know, Tom, so I'll yeah. give a yeah, yes, a yes, credible, yes, yes, Tim. Yes, Tim. Um, has anybody asked if you're part of the Gab.com? It's pretty yeah, close to your Gabnet, isn't it? Gary. I was thinking about that. Uh, I got yeah, a call from J from Jack the other night saying a friend of his called him and said, aren't you afraid you're going to be confused? No, we are GabNet. We are not Gab.com. And I'm, even if we were... You by all the Trump voters up there. They and, won't know and, that. And even if we were, they were simply giving somebody a page. They were like Facebook. You know, they're not guilty of anything. Hey, you're Gab on the net. Now, that, that's uh, you should be convicted. <laughs> no, I'm well, I guess since Go Sugar Daddy pulled their funding, you, I mean, you know, Daddy you know in, in no. some countries you get arrested for exercising free speech. In most countries, right? Most countries. Okay. I, the hate speech that they allowed on Gab, uh, you know, I know, I, I, I agree with the First Amendment, and you know, even the ACLU fight fought for the Nazis' right to march or whatever yeah, it was. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, as much as I feel the Nazis the are the most dis uh, one of the most despicable groups of people on this well, face it's of the interesting. earth. It's, uh, it's interesting because Trump doesn't, but go ahead. Yes, he does. Yes, no, he, he doesn't. Does. You're putting words in his mouth. No, he put his own words in his mouth when he said that... They, uh, he was he was doing nothing more than the ACLU did uh, when they allowed no, these guys no, to march. No, the ACLU did that because they saw that there was a legal protection that needed to be afforded every citizen, and they would be hypocritical if they didn't, on some level, go and defend their right to march. Not and, to make and Trump uh, saying that you know just because uh, there are some statues in the South. That there were some no, good people no, too. It, it, They're not it, all Nazis. Good people on both sides, he said. Well, not, yeah, that, he was didn't a, that was a Nazis. false equivalency, completely false. He didn't include Nazis. You know, he, and, he complained because because Bernie Sanders didn't get arrested no. for the uh, the other attack that was no, supposedly his follower, that, like Steve Scalise. But Tim, what he was saying, what he was saying that there were things that happened under other people's watches. But they're associating Trump with this, and they, they didn't, didn't associate they, uh, Obama they didn't, with the church or Sanders with shooting. They didn't spread lies about the targets that were hit by the uh, the crazy people. I don't though. believe that Trump spread lies about those targets. Those targets he, spread them on. He's, he's lied about each one of those targets. Every one of them. Brennan, you know, they, they said that. And uh, Hill, how, you, how many how many times did he lie about Clinton and Obama? How many I don't times? think any of them were lies. I think they were all true. <laughs> you, mean the, you believe in the birther movement then? Yeah. Where's uh, Obama? Yeah, I'm a birther. Can I, uh, can I say something? Yeah, yeah sure. Please. Go right ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Has this number one has this for a soundbite in terms of putting words in someone's mouth? In this case, Trump's. It's not Alex putting words in Trump's mouth. It's Alex putting words to Trump's actions. Number two, these what actions. actions uh, these actions. Let me finish. God damn it. These actions are it. are from the uh, are are from a stochastic terrorist, like Mr. Yes. Trump. Yes, but I know what that means too. Stochastic Brian. terrorist. Well, look. As far as I'm concerned, his actions have been nothing but positive. You look at, you see, when you, when, I wasn't you look at Trump, when you look at Trump, you only see the negative. Uh, I see a big, see fat, me. fucking asshole. Yes. I see a mushroom dick. <laughs> well, they try to, you know, the left try to do the same thing to Reagan. Uh, calling him, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, but Reagan was a great game. communicator. He at least had an affability about him. So, so the fact that Trump isn't as good a communicator but is a great leader that that he can't everything. even read a teleprompter yeah. convincingly. So what? That's not. That's <laughs> oh well, well, he was the one. He, wasn't he the one? Wasn't he the one? Yes, president. it yes it is because you have to be able to communicate to the public in or especially in situations like this and not get up and read some pre. -pre 
prepared statement that makes you look like an eighth grader who's been asked to read in class and doesn't want to do it. I'm sorry, I think your priorities are all wrong. I thought his priority was to make sure that we didn't have nuclear war with North Korea. I thought his priorities were to make sure that he fulfilled his promises to Israel. I thought his priorities were... Wait a minute, why doesn't he fulfill his promises to me? To protect me as a citizen, well, to make is. me safe. He's no, he's American not. Reform. He all he, he does, all he well, does is perpetuate. Sure. All he does is perpetuate hate and violence. And he uh, he he sits there and he likes it. You're you're, you're listening to too much. No, I'm listening to him, Phil. <laughs> I'm listening to him when he goes. Oh boy, that's my kind of guy because. He body slammed it's a, a, a rally. Yeah, he's a no, I don't give a shit if it's a rally. That's that's where the future bombers. That's where the future bombers. Where the future. Uh, You're trying to stifle what he has to say. You're trying to stifle his message. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you sh- so uh, then I guess the uh, the NAA uh, what do you call it? the ACLU was all wrong in defending uh, the right of Nazis to march. You're defending a guy who believes in violence. Hey, Alex, I got an example for you. Do you. Do you know Howard Feynman? I know the name. Yeah. Yeah, he's he was he. That was his original neighborhood. As well. Oh as yes, Mr. yes, Rogers, Howard he, Feynman. He's yeah. He's reporting. Yeah. Howard Feynman's reporting that the White House called top Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania political officials, lied to each of them, and said the others had already agreed. To meet the president in Pittsburgh. Another conspiracy. He did the same thing to Schumer. And Pelosi, I'll believe Feynman. So I'll be fi- individually I'll be, yeah, that the other had agreed to go. T- uh, uh, Phil, I'll believe Feynman before I believe you. Feynman's a very good reporter. I believe in very distinguished. Conspiracy. And very distinguished. <laughs> Something you are not. News. Hey, Trump, news. Trump wanted to go in the hospital rooms for photo ops, and most of the families denied him access. Now, I'm just you know, reporting. Go to Howard Feynman on Twitter, and you can tweet it at about ten hours ago or something like that. They have but that's I almost spent my that's coffee just from there. And that is Feynman's home neighborhood. That's where he was raised, oh, Squirrel Hill. Uh, yeah, and, and, and Feynman would would know because he knows all those people, and he would not lie. I, I just can't imagine him lying. Yeah, that's funny. You, you were talking about this. You know, it's, it's funny, funny that whenever Facebook, anything uh, is reported, wait a minute. Let me finish this. Anytime anything's reported, Phil's answer to it is fake news. Yeah. You know, that's like know. the immediate okay. defense of anything. Uh, Why are you surprised? Uh, here's Howard Feynman on Twitter. Trump pays tribute at synagogue where eleven were fatally shot. Uh, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers is a gracious, wise leader. He had no choice but to allow the Trumps to visit. Uh, tree of Life. It was quick, restrained, crowds were absent, uh, polls were, uh, I don't, P-O-L-S. Well, well what don't you know. didn't notice was how fast the play. rabbi, how fast the rabbi dragged him inside to keep it from becoming a political rally of one sort or another, whether it was people yeah. complaining, whether it was people complaining against him or whatever. He wanted to get it away from there, so by bringing Trump inside, he was able to stop that or at least blunt it. He was I, d- I doing the only thing he could do. A positive thing. It, well, a how is it a positive thing? I think thing? it would have been, but not the timing if they don't want him. No, 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 that's, that's, a, that's your interjection. I think that uh, going there. These, uh, these, uh, these people, you know, Phil, 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 these people, the these said. people, these people uh, have, like the Phil, these Democrats. people have lost loved ones and they don't want to be used <laughs> for politics and for how politicizing. How do you know using them instead of being Because it had. When it looks uh, uh, like pol- when well, it looks like politicking and it smells like politicking, oh, you can pretty like well politics. be sure that it's politicking. Hey, hey, are you, are you Jewish, Phil? Like a similar yes, pattern I am. From years okay. ago. Not today. I can't, to me, if I, I can't imagine him using the American Holocaust <laughs> yeah, that's, for political gain. He's that's not using the Holocaust. The, this was a terrible thing. If it happened at a black church, I would have expected. I, I would have expected him to go to. This is America's Holocaust. And by the way, the under Jews Obama, I think it, this yeah. is just wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go to Tim because he knows about certain things. Uh, Obama was president when a similar occurrence happened, and I'm, I I believe it happened at a black church. And yes. he waited. Yeah, North, he, North, North at, South Carolina. And he waited Second how long North. before he went down there? He didn't do it the next day, did he? It was about That's a week. It was about a week. 
And, and I think Bush had something similar happen, and he waited about a week. This is the, but he let him know. He let him know he, they were coming, so they wouldn't think he was going to ignore it. But they gave him time to prepare. Yeah. How long do Jews wait until they uh, intern their dead? What? Two, two days. Quick. Two days. Two days. So, you don't know, you know that you're a Jew. Yeah. But, but don't, yeah, so I, I don't think they can do that when they're doing autopsies. Well, they, yeah. No. Yeah. Two days. That's it. No, no, no. Yeah, but sometimes it's real quick. Phil, yeah. Phil, they're getting longer than two days. There's an exception here because there are autopsies that are being done. And, they're, they're, and, and they, believe they it or not, b- believe it or not, when, when Moses seven. was alive and the laws were written, uh, there mm-hmm. weren't autopsies. Okay. Weren't they pushed him down the river in the movie? In the little well, they, did, they, felt they, didn't, they didn't have refrigerator, refrigerators back then either. No, no but uh, four or five of them were buried today, right? Yeah. So, uh, two of them, two I, of them, I think. Uh, there was the brothers. There, I think there was yeah. at least four, maybe five, mm. uh, were, were buried. So did they complete their autopsies faster than the, uh, the other six? They may well have. You know, but all I'm saying is is that there are exceptions. You should bury them within two days, but if there are things like if, autopsies that have to happen or things that legally have to happen, you're you know you're you're allowed. It isn't like God I, is going to get you. I know when my father died, uh, it was over the Passover holiday, and uh, so they it was three days in that case because of Passover. Well, part of the reason why the Jews bury within two days and the Muslims within one within 24 hours, is basically because it's the belief that once somebody is buried, the healing can begin. And so it's done as a healing process. So it's not written in stone, it's just considered tradition. Well, and then we sit shiver for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, yeah, you know, there's usually good food. Yeah, that's what the casserole and was invented for. Spread. Yeah. My mother already said when she passes away, she only wants two days. She don't want more than that, both of them. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, you know. That's enough, she figures. Listen, I had, want, I had a. I'm uh, glad because I, I don't want to be there three I days. had a woman who worked with me, Christy, whose I mother died, see. whose mother died, and it was during a, uh, 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 what do you call it, a, a, uh, uh, a strike of the mortuary people. What happened to Tim? Oh, uh, we lost Tim for a yeah, minute, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Maybe he got a phone call. Uh, uh, and and during a, during a uh, cemetery strike, and she oh couldn't bury God. her grandmother for three months. Oh my God! <laughs> what they put her? You know, and she would come in every day. She say, "Just my grandmother is probably lying I there." The you know, just uh, 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 you know, months to put her in. Yeah, it's uh-huh. terrible. So that's why you want to bury somebody as fast as possible, you know. Um, and I, I mean, in my case, uh, I suggest you bury me standing up so I take as little up as little space as possible. Yeah. So uh, yeah. now, and throw my ass in a box, light it on fire, and uh, you know, now, blow the ashes away. That's all yeah. I fucking care about. Now, Alex, your uh, your funeral's paid for, and you get a, a burial with a casket because of the military. Oh yeah, you don't, you don't have to be cremated. And, oh really? Uh, yeah, and ha- yeah, I, uh, I believe that that's one of the benefits that uh, I think he's right for. Yeah. yeah, well, it's very nice that I can get that kind of benefit. You know. Yeah, I don't know if they'll bury you at Arlington, but... Uh, no, no, and I wouldn't go so far as to request that. I went know. to a military funeral. My, bro- my brother's... My brother-in-law's... Because I think, I think I sitting had, in... Uh, I, I don't mind the free casket, but sitting in uh, um, uh, Hollywood uh, off of... Uh, uh, Wilshire? Wilshire. <laughs> or, or no, that's... No, no, I was, I, 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 Santa Monica <laughs> Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, uh, does not really qualify as Arlington stuff, you know? Well, you know, you also will get a, uh, a folded flag uh, uh, presented to your widow. Uh, and uh, and I believe that they'll send a contingent to your funeral to uh, 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 do some sort of honor guard. Yeah, right. I'm not going to do any of that, okay, Phil? Well, they do it for you. Just, no, I didn't. You know, I don't consider my military service to be uh, uh, high level. Okay, uh, it's more than yours, but uh, you know, I don't consider <laughs> it to true. be of a nature. Hey, there was no war when I was eighteen. He wishes there was a war. When, when you were eighteen, they were still uh, fighting the War of eighteen twelve. Yeah, I mean, good thing you didn't see it. I would hate to get drafted. 
I would have went. I, I would have been going. I was number sixty four and not a very good student. I would have. Uh, and uh, they eliminated the draft the week that I was eighteen. So uh, I was eighteen, June twenty fourth of seventy two. That last week they had a lottery, but Nixon said the lottery didn't count. And so therefore, and I was number sixty four in that lottery. So sixty four was definitely going. You know, uh, you know the guys that got three hundred, they weren't going. But sixty four, uh, I, I would have been saying, uh, you know, where's where's the chow mein? You know, <laughs> yeah, I would have been scared. Yeah, wow. Well, that bus. war was that was that was the the war that ruined us. You know, yeah, that, you're right. that, I would have been. I never would that decision said. was a bad decision because you had an entire country that was divided among itself, and people who were being forced to do illegal things in order to survive. And but I, it was Johnson that uh, that escalated the war. And uh, yeah, from he lied you know, about the Gulf of Tonkin too. Yeah, well, I was, and Alex knows about that. Yeah, I was I was involved in knowing about that because I was mustered out with guys who were in the Gulf of Tonkin, and they came back with all these ribbons. And I said, "Boy, it must have really been something out there, huh?" And they said, "What? Nothing went on." Yeah. And so I came back into civilian life, and in radio, I kept saying on talk shows, there, nothing went on in the Gulf of Tonkin. And when I finally went to ABC and said this, I was told by ABC News not to say that ever again because that was a lie. And just a couple of months later, it came out that the Gulf of Tonkin was a fake. And they came the to me. Conspiracy they came to me and they said, how did you know? And I said, I keep my ears open. Yeah, it was the, it was the theories are actually true. It was the first fake well, news. <laughs> so there is fake news, right? Yeah. right? yeah, in reverse. That was uh, by the government. It was yeah. government sanctioned. And then, so th then I got really bold, and the next thing that I did was I had heard that Richard Nixon, when he was in Russia, had signed a treaty uh, to allow them to use, uh, to I think it was, was it Coca-Cola? Or Pepsi. That was it, Pepsi. Uh, to bring Pepsi into, into, into Russia. Now, imagine the President of the United States going to Russia and negotiating a treaty that would allow Pepsi-Cola, right, of all things, to be sold in Russia. And, I was, and once again, once again, I was told by uh, uh, ABC, shut up, that isn't true. And a couple of weeks later, it came out that it was true. And they said, again, how did you know? And I said, I keep my ears open. When Nixon was president, Russia was a communist country that basically behind the Iron Curtain. Their currency wasn't uh, being traded, I think, on the open market. And uh, there were times when they used to trade vodka for, uh, for uh, stuff rather than currency because their currency was uh, not, uh, not accepted. Isn't that true? Not that I know of, but, you know. Uh, we we wouldn't we weren't trading with them, but I think a lot of other countries were. Yeah. You know, we're not the only country in the world, Phil. This whole concept that well, if you it, can't, you know, if China can't do business with the United States, they're really going to be in trouble. And the fact of the matter is, they just do business with India, and they're happy. We are rapidly they're, they're, their economy dollarizing. Their economy took a big hit in the last uh, month over the tariffs. Oh, really? And, That's not yeah. what I hear. What I hear is they're just doing more business with India and a lot of other countries. They got the rest of the world to do business with, and the rest of the world is happy to do business with them. Because you know why, Phil? They've got money. Yes. Well, yes, uh, Brian. Let me dovetail with that. They not only have money, they have money that isn't based on the petrodollar. So you got these countries like Russia, China, India, et cetera, et cetera, that are de-dollarizing themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of economists appear to appear to be uh, taking notice of how rapidly uh, the de-dollarization is occurring and has been occurring for the last... The de-dollarization? You, know, you know who needs us, though? You know, the, the country that really needs us is Saudi Arabia. Yeah, because they're they they, with us. It's they, the petrodollar, they, isn't it? They can't, they can't get weapons if it's not for us, because... If they go oh, to Russia get or France, they 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 can't get supplies for the weapons they have in place. They won't. They won't. They'll be mismatched. Mm -hmm. so Saudi Arabia's got their Saudi Arabia's got their metaphorical cock lodged deep yeah, inside they, of they, our they, asshole. They need us a lot more than we need them. Yeah, yeah. But yet we're going right along with them. 
you know, even in spite of this uh, Kosoji deal, human uh, rights violators uh, that they you, are. You know, they we're still doing business with them. Oh, you know, to begin with, Trump went out and said, "We have a how many billion dollar deal with the Saudis," and that's one hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. When it's only, are you ready, folks? Twelve billion, in reality. Is it yeah, one hundred and ten over yeah, a period of time? No. Is the that was the menu of things they offered to sell Saudi Arabia, and they only took options out on 10%, which was around $12 billion. Yeah. So that was a lie. That was a big lie. Um, did you know that the DOJ is investigating Zinke for profiting while in office? Who, who's Zinke? He's a... Uh, uh, he's Department a, of Interior. Yeah. And I think it's a test case for the DOJ to see if they could do the same thing to the Trump family. Uh, because uh, the Trump org's being investigated again. We'll see. Yeah. But the way we'll see what happens next but week. I think they're and using Zinke as a test case. Yeah. And, and the reason Rosenstein's still there, and also Sessions, because they know what Mueller has, and they know at some point Trump or most probably his family members are going to go down big time. And you heard the latest on Roger Stone, didn't you? Well, uh, tell me about Roger, because I find him interesting, you know? Well, he, they, they found more memos where he had said to, to insiders, not to the general public, because he's a, a liar and a showman, but it, to his internal people that he'd been working with, because uh, he used to be able to buy into his buy, uh, semi-weekly uh, uh, conference calls, and he would give you the inside dope. He big, made big money off of it, but there's growing evidence that he knew and had been communicating with Assange when Assange, when Assange was getting together all the uh, well, that the that that yeah, that but that, that 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 has been what they've been saying all along about him and that he was. But he's it. been saying he never talked to Assange ahead of time. But they're finding not they're finding emails, they're finding recordings, they're finding videos where he just didn't say it as a bravado that he said it to people he was working with. I'll tell with. you something, though. I, I, you know, I've, I saw a documentary on, uh, on Roger Stone called uh, Get Me Roger Stone, and then I last week watched a documentary, uh, the Client uh, 9 film about Elliot Spitzer, <laughs> and believe it or not, Roger Stone plays largely in both pictures. Uh, he's, yeah. Uh, he's been all over the place, and I find him interesting. You know, because this is a guy who says, I don't care what you say about me. If you think I'm a terrible person, I love it. You know? He's a, he's a wannabe like Rasputin or somebody that was a court jester that wanted to be involved he in everything. He wants to be. You know, what, almost he, be a no, you know what he, he wants? He's almost a magician. He wants to be Roy Cohn is what he wants yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah but, but more of an inter on the entertainment side than the legal side. Any of us who have had the ability to look uh, Roy Cohn straight in the face have said, and I've said this, and everybody who's ever met up with him said, I never knew what the devil looked like till I looked into the eyes of Roy Cohn. Does he look like he doesn't have a soul? Is that how it looks? It, it, the, the, uh, shark eyes, maybe. And didn't know? he yep. tell you that he slept very well at night? Yes, because of the death of the Rosenbergs. Yeah. Right. Hey, yeah. hey, Alex, did you ever know Credo, the, this comedian in New York? No, never heard of him. The guy that is, that he talks about him mostly. I forget what station he's still on, on one of the radio stations. There. No, yeah, Credo is a not. Character too. Credico, Credico is who you're thinking of. Credico, I'm sorry, Credico. Randy did Credico. Did you ever know him? No, I think he was just a mediocre comic that. Quite frankly, never crossed paths with me. So yeah, he's he's trying to make it in the big time because of what he knows on on. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, Roger Stone, that's Rand, Randy Credico. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, um, uh, who was it? Who was it they said Stone was was representing? He he, you know, he's he's been there a lot with people doing dirty tricks for people. He was like really good at dirty tricks. Um. And I just find him interesting, you know, more interesting than a lot of the other bad guys. I mean, he's more interesting than Trump. He's more interesting than any of that gang of fools down in Washington right now uh, because, he is, the because he is so unapologetic. You know, the rule book that, in fact, Trump used him for a long time 
Oh, yeah. And, and so they communicated during the, during the campaign. And what they do with the uh, Get Me Roger Stone thing is they have Roger Stone's rule number one, number two, number three. And there are things like never, ever admit you're wrong. Never. Right. It's a cutthroat manifesto, in other words. Yeah. Every yeah. T- every time someone has admitted they're wrong, even with the Me Too movement, what mm-hmm. did they do to them? They crucified them. Well, I agree with you on that. I'm not saying that he's necessarily wrong in that assumption. That if you're gonna if you're gonna maintain uh, a certain equilibrium, you just don't admit to anything. So yeah. maybe Trump is following his direction and uh, well, and doing I, a good no, job you only it. have to do that if you have something to hide, Phil. Not necessarily. Yes, People you do. Accuse you, and uh, you just don't admit. Never you're wrong. admit you're wrong, even when you're caught with your pants down. If you got your dick in somebody's mouth, especially, ma- especially if you're caught if, with if your he, pants if down. If you got your dick in somebody's mouth, just say what dick. You know, I I'll mean, try to make that stormy lady pay for the lawyer fees. That's what I was going to tell you. Yeah. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. You know what, she's going to have you to dance for that. Stone? What? You know, I think I know what's special about Stone. He's a salesman, and you almost say, well, man, if he was on my side, I might like some of the stuff. That there. is true. I would love to have, have him on my side. There we go. There's a picture of Roger Stone. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, you, know, he, you know who he has tattooed on his back? Nixon. Uh, Trump? Richard Nixon. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> who would get Nixon right in this? Is that one of his prison tattoos? Right in the small of his back. Oh no, he's had that God. for years. He said, I remember hearing about that from the young they call that They call out a uh, bitch stamp or uh, a tramp stamp. No, that's what no, a tramp stamp is low. Nixon stamp. It, it's Nixon, like, it's back. No, but I'm talking about he up has here. Nixon is an yeah. idol. Right? Yeah. Alex? People need to get the Trump stamp on their back, I bet you like that. Oh, I think he's got Trump, uh, Nixon on, uh, tattooed on his back because he just wants to piss people off. That's what I figure right. about right. Roger yeah. Stone. Hey, Nixon kept me out of the war. I like the guy. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Well, he did start the EPA. He did huh? start the Among EPA. Yeah, start the EPA. He did a couple of good things, you know. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, was he wasn't bit, so damn paranoid. He would have fulfilled his second term. Well, many the, the, the trouble, no, the trouble, yeah, yeah. the trouble with Nixon, the trouble with Nixon was that he always grabbed uh, defeat from the hands of victory. Uh, when he was in college, uh, he was supposed to graduate at like the top DNC. of the, at, at the top of his class, and he snuck into the dean's office late at night to see where he was going to finish. And they caught him and, and didn't even let him graduate with the rest of the class. And it uh, turned out he was number one, okay? Yeah, so, it's paranoia. So, you so, know, so, uh, so you, if, you, if, you, if you take that and you, and you trans, uh, transfer it to, say, Watergate, it's the same thing. You know, he was going to win, but he had to find out what the Democrats were doing. He, he was so brilliant that uh, when uh, the USSR fell... He said that this is an opportunity to bring uh, Russia into uh, the uh, to to the rest of the world and to help them uh, create uh, uh, capitalism and uh, and and free economy. And most people said, uh, "Hey, we don't want to do this because our uh, people in our country are starving, and uh, so therefore, why should we help the Russians?" And uh, you know he he was he was brilliant in that, and that he could see uh, the, the benefit of, of doing that, and how it would have been so much better in the mm-hmm. long run. Yeah. If uh, you know, he, he he was a globalist to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't a nationalist. Uh, <laughs> Trump says that just means he believes in America. No, that means hey, something if, else, Phil. If, if to if you. Trump well, is, he's. I he, got a question for the question for the l- panel. Look it up in the dictionary. Like uh, he's going to do like that. At least I kept him quiet for a couple of minutes. Quick, everybody talk. Tim wanted to say something. Yes. If, if, if Trump takes the birthright away retroactively, doesn't that mean most of us would be non-citizens except for the American natives? No, not even them. Well, he, can't, you know he, can't he can't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it. The 14th uh, None of us are here originally. We all were birthright people. The, the 14th Amendment doesn't say anything about the parents being illegal. Uh, it just says that if you're born here or you're uh, 
Uh, right, but Trump wants to change it so that if you're not born to an American citizen, but you're he not feels. A, but how, how do you how do you feel about can. about the fact that he he feels that by his own executive order he can will this into being, even though it's against the Constitution? He, Phil, he thinks he can change the interpretation of that amendment, and if he actually did it, he wouldn't be a citizen. Hmm. Romney wouldn't be a citizen. Hey, I'm, I'm looking. Cruz at, wouldn't be a citizen. I'm I'm looking at the, uh, it's called dictionary. Uh, I just Googled it, and it says nationalist, noun, a person who advocates political independence for a country, adjective, relating to nationalists or nationalism. So uh, keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, There's more, multiple definitions of nationalism. Uh, a, person with, political a, definition. a person with strong patriotic feelings who believes in the superiority of their country over others. All well, right. I look up white, nation, white nationalism. That, he didn't he say he was a white. A white he didn't nationalist. say he was a white nationalist. He but said he was a nationalist. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tim, you're Phil, you're Phil, you're Phil, you're Phil, Phil. Wait a minute. Let me you're ask you a question. Hold nice on now. a second. I'm going to end this debate right now. Phil, he said he was a nationalist, right? Yeah. I just okay. Looked it up. And what color is he? Orange. <laughs> well, I guess you're right. He's an orange nationalist. That's right. He's, he, he believes in orange Juliuses. How did he manage oh, to get a color cool. going for him that isn't found in nature? Uh, it's spray on tan. But, you know, the oh, thing is, terrible. did you notice his hair is getting a lot shorter? Oh, it has I been for a long time. It. Oh, no, no. It's, he's, he's cutting it shorter. He every, comb over. every day it's getting... Uh, but he was so blue. worried about the way the propeller redid his hair the other night he was just uh, people were had died where had they already died in the synagogue and yet yeah, he, he was, almost canceled a rally Imagine he that. almost canceled a rally because of his hair he didn't cancel uh, it because of the hair day. because of the, a joke of the jews that died he he almost canceled it because of his hair he's gonna need a pick soon to call him that hair like you know like a color <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> He either needs, needs a come over or a kofefe or whatever the fuck he said that one time. You, you know, you know, you know what the problem with Trump is? What? He talks in public like one of us might talk in the locker room to our buddies, where you kind of exaggerate and you're talking big, talk big stuff. He does it constantly, though. <laughs> that that locker room, he, him, his mouth, he just nothing but locker room talk. Sometimes inappropriate even though it's done in jest he does it and most of the time it's not in jest but he just is ridiculously exaggerates everything well he loves it he loves real personality coming it, through he, he said they started the stock exchange the day after 9-11 i think it was closed even yeah, they even tony up, knows it was closed even Tony no, he, knows he it was, was closed. closed for five to seven days. Yeah. Mr. Money Jesus Guy Austin. doesn't know it was closed. Yeah. They, they opened it for him. Uh, Just for him. Probably. Unless he was trading in China. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, you couldn't get into Manhattan. Everything was closed. Yeah. Didn't they move the stock exchange to New Jersey uh, yeah. right after 9-11? You know why they opened it the day after, in his mind? Because all the Muslims had to get to access to their money so they could party in the streets, like he said they did. No, they try to they try to buy uh, a uh, you know uh, they try to buy him uh, or Bush. What they did was uh, uh, one of the one of the Saudi princes uh, donated, I think it was ten million dollars, and uh, gave it to Rudy Giuliani, and yeah. Rudy Giuliani. Uh, return that money it was a question that i asked him and mm. he said that it was blood money and he wasn't going to take it uh but uh, they used they used their appearances at the 9-11 site to uh to try to get the americans to say that they were wrong uh and cause this themselves mm. and giuliani wouldn't ta wouldn't stand for that oh good he's a principled guy yeah, well, there's a lot of people in the uh, in the in the House and the Senate that wanted him to keep that money. They said that this is a lot of money, and they and that they could use it. And so he mm. he stood up and said he he wasn't going to do it. Wow. He is a principal. I, I, guy. Yeah, you've changed my entire opinion about Rudy Giuliani with that. Yeah, it is Rudy. Yeah, what a great guy. 
What a terrific guy. Hey, talking about great guys. Yeah, he's uh, a crypt keeper in Skeletor. Haven't no, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> and talking about great guys, we're all in for a big, uh, a big uh, payday because I heard that the $750 million uh, Powerball or whatever, oh. Mega, uh, was won in Harlem. Oh, in West, West Harlem is now. Alex, are you holding out on us and not <laughs> telling us that you you your ticket hit? For the citizens panel. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did we buy oh, one? Did we buy just, one? That was for when? Tonight? It, like, no, a couple days ago. Couple the days last, ago. Big, the big, uh, yeah, the, the big, the big, the local one. Uh, yeah, the local. Uh, one. I don't know if it's local. I thought it was national. It, well, not somebody the, won not the, in not uh, the New York, and somebody won in South Carolina. Not in the not the Mega Million. But well, the it's, it was this next one. Who down. knows? We may have won because they only know where it was sold. They don't necessarily know if the person. Right. Did, well, the, did you look at your ticket? Did the person come forward yet? Well, you're the person. We, we figure uh, we're waiting for our Could checks. well be. I'm going to have girlfriend <laughs> check the numbers tomorrow. She she buy, has the tickets, and then she never looks at them. It's seventh on the west side. She doesn't expect to win. Huh? She has every reason yeah. to expect to Is Seventh Avenue on the west side? Yeah. Condition okay. It was West, West Harlem, they said. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we on where the, the ticket side? was bought. <laughs> I think we're West uh, on the... Uh, no, I don't know. Fifth is the middle. And oh, okay. uh, I, I don't remember which way... Oh, well, then, uh, we're, yeah, we're on West. We're West. Okay. Yeah. So it was in West Harlem that the winning ticket was bought, and I believe it was for $750 million. And uh, well, wait, wait a minute. No, because the, the, it was 750 million, but then it split between two people. Uh, oh, uh, there was two people that won, I believe, in uh, what is it, South Carolina? Yeah, and and one, I think, one in Harlem or or the ticket. Okay, so they know the a ticket was sold in Harlem. Has the guy come forward? Is the question, has the person come I forward? I don't know. And if, uh, if they I'm, I'm waiting for you to come forward, hey, here's a little piece of news maybe you would like uh, to know. Because I found this out last night by necessity. A horn on a car, burglar alarm horn, kept going off for five solid hours last night. It was like water. Uh, no. Beep, beep, beep. And then it would stop for like a minute, and then it would start up again. So finally, I looked up, what do you do about a car horn going off in your neighborhood? Right? Cops. No. What do you do? You call 911. Yeah. So I called 911, and the woman was very nice. And it's the only time I've ever called 911. And she said, uh, let me look. And she checked. And she said, yeah, we've had other complaints, too. So we're sending a cop car out right now to take care of it. And then all of a sudden, I listen outside, and it stopped. But then it started up again, so I felt relieved. Because I didn't want the cops to get there say, we don't hear anything, and then leave again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but, geez, who lets their alarm go off like that? And then girlfriend said, probably the guy parked his car and lives three blocks away. You know, I have very loud pipes on my motorcycle, and yeah. I love setting off car alarms as I drive down the street. Oh, oh yes, you do. But you like farting in crowded elevators and wait, and, uh, wait until people it's can hop that air in. Uh, I can't trust them anymore. Uh it, I like farting in crowded elevators and then looking at another guy, you know. <laughs> like, or, hey, doing, or doing that and hey, saying, you, you, is that popcorn I smell? You, you, heard, that, you <laughs> heard that joke, guy farts, and uh, the uh, and uh, this man and woman are standing there, and he says, how dare you fart before my wife? And the guy who farted said, geez, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was her turn. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very good joke, I guess. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm hey, sure. Hey, Brian. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I posted the on your on your Facebook Gamnet Live. Yeah. I posted the article about the veterans who are going to be kicked out. Oh, I just saw it. I was just I just saw the notification. Thank you. Like I said, anything on my page you want to post too, go ahead. And well, it. that's what's called a theme song. Thank God, it's a theme song. Yeah. I don't do it often enough anymore, anyhow. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's a nice theme song, meaning that we're over with here, unfortunately. Uh, I want to thank you, Brian, for having joined us this evening on the uh, on the ramble. As I'm I'm stretching it because I'm I'm too few people to say goodbye to and too much time to go. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Tony, thank you. Anthony Magno, you can see there, ladies and gentlemen. Phil Meyer. 
I'd like to say it's always a pleasure, but not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> that and, song means you don't have to go home, but you got to get the fuck out of here. And Tim, thank you so much for calling and adding uh, some some respectful Conspiracy. feelings, <laughs> conspiracies on this program. Thank you, uh, all of you. Why don't you, except for Tim, he can't do it. Wave goodbye to the folks out there. We'll see you hopefully again tomorrow night. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. That's how it works. We just get a bunch of people, and they, uh, they, uh, you know, they, yeah, they, they do, they do a nice job of, uh, of, of dealing with us, and uh, getting into a whole discussion on the world and the world about us. Anyway, uh, that's it for us tonight. Uh, that's all she wrote. We'll see you again tomorrow. The intersection is next with uh, Jack Bishop, and then that is followed by uh, connections with the wonderful uh, people down in Florida. That's at 1 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time. And then uh, tomorrow night, Eastern Daylight Time, 9, uh, as, at 8.30, it's the Franchise MC and our sports show, The Arena, followed by Damian Chaplin. He's here right after that with, uh, yeah, yeah, he's here with the exchange. And then we'll be back again tomorrow night. 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Please?